A temple is an educational place where students are given admission and could be prepared for the future. This place was built so that everyone could develop some skills for the future times. There was a special class in temple. Every student of that class was special in its own care. Their skills were considered the rarest among the others. That was why they were given special education so that they would be able to serve the future. The students were the elite students. With regard to the temple's population of students, only 1% of the students were included in the gifted classroom. That means that the special classroom alone had 1% of the total population. The classroom was given the name of class initially there were only 10 students. However as soon a new student joined them, Reinhardt, when this news to given to the class, the whole class was in shock, as Reinhardt just have a merely aptitude. So this makes it impossible for him to be a part of the program. Everyone started gossiping about him as no one has ever met him. When Reinhardt walked into the classroom he was formally welcomed. Reinhardt himself didn't know what has happened and according to him how he made into such a monstrous class. So a pissed Reinhardt left the class and started walking downstairs. While doing so, he was thinking it is possible that he has been made a target. Turns out that Reinhardt was a 30-year-old man, living his life. He did a terrible mistake or sin which made him into a 17-year boy. Such a boy who is forced to attend classes in the temple, due to his past life sins. In this world he has been turned into the son of the demon. He knew this from the start that he will be surrounded by those people who just wants to ruin him and get ahead of him. Yet Reinhardt showed his sportsman spirit and decides that he has to figure out his way. For this it would be necessary for him to grow stronger so that he might be able to beat people. Also he has to complete various tasks so that he can get achievement points. He makes a promise to himself that he would make through it no matter what happens. Throwback to the time when there was a war between humans and demons. The war was known as the Demon World War. The war was really important for both of them equally because the war would decide the fate of humans and demons. After a long war, it finally ended when the human hero Artorius was able to kill the great demon King Valier. Peace was established between the two races. After the war was ended, it was necessary for humans to cultivate talent and skill among the younger people so that they might be able to fight with any situation in the future. For this an educational institution called Temple came into being. The place was filled with skill and creative students. There was a class of which had the students with the rare skills. In that class there was a student named Ludwig. He had anger issues. He used to be a lone wolf. He used to write novels online. After launch one of his novel, he was going through the comment section where all he was able to see was hatred for his current work. This made him stressed so he decided to head down for some time. The next time he wakes up, he finds himself dead. His soul asks Kim, the manager of Hell's soul department to confirm about his death. An irritated Kim reminds him that he is staring right at his dead body and now he should believe. Ludwig was not happy about his death due to his high blood pressure. Kim then gives him a form which he must sign so they can proceed further. In this world, everyone who dies will get a second chance to repent for their mistakes. After doing so, their souls would be allowed to enter into heaven. Ludwig's sin count was low because all he did was sit in one room and write novel. Looking at Ludwig's low sin count he was given some options. He was told to choose any of his novel as a form of punishment. Though Ludwig was not given some good option, Kim told him that he was the writer so this should be easy for him but only he knew that none of them have happy endings. As the first option was his first novel City of the Dead which was about zombies, in which he will probably die. Second was the surviving in the ruined world which is also an Apolcap story. But it was this story, which got so negative comments that he died. As per third option was the hunter became a manager, in which he would die too. Among all of the given options, he got a better novel he wrote The Demon King is Dead which is a fantasy based. But he decided to look for other options because the story had a major twist which he does not remember. Kim gets irritated. She tells him to decide faster or she would do it for him. Finally he decides to go with the demon king is dead as he signs the paper. The next time he wakes up, he finds himself as a small kid with horns. While looking for instructions, he finds a screen monitor which tells him his character is Valier Jr., the son of the demon king. The palace is under attack and he has to survive. The problem was that Ludwig didn't have any such character in his story. He starts running for his life while thinking about Kim, and why it has to be him to get this specific character. Now he has to do everything possible to stay alive. As he himself wrote the novel by this point he knew that this is novel based on the war between humans and demons. That is why the demon palace is under attack by humans. Currently he has been in the prologue of the novel he wrote. Also the fact that humans will win this war. It would be more difficult for him to survive. As now he is the son of the demon king it means he has to do everything so that he does not get caught. If he does, he would die immediately. Valier looks at his dashboard again to notice his skills but he gets to know that the only good skill he has in this world is that he can read. Except this there are no skills that would help him survive in this world. 
he has a second thought that what if he would have the character of the Demon King? At least he would not be in a bad situation like this. As a Demon King he would have ran away or made a contract with humans to stop the war. Valier stops in front of the warehouse and decides to go in to check out the place in hope of getting something good to find. He searches the place and was able to find a locked metal suit. When he opens it he finds a magical book. He mentioned this book in his novel as if someone wants to use magic but does not have any abilities. He, she would be able to do that with this book's app. He decides to use the teleportation magic because that looks like the easiest way to get away with all this. When he tries using it, he fails as there is magic blockage which stops him. This angers him as he might die under the rubble. Then he comes up with another plan. He decides to use the magic by changing his appearance. He makes a plan that if he makes himself appear as a prisoner then soon he would be found by human army. They will take him to a safe place from where it would be very easy for him to escape. According to his plan, he changes his appearance and goes inside the prison. Just as he enters the prison, he feels that something is wrong. He then smells blood so he looks down to his feet. He finds himself standing on the human hand. This terrifies him as he falls back. Soon Valier gets up only to notice that everyone is dead in the room. He still has no idea of what has happened here but decides to explore the room. There he finds a lady sitting beside a dead body. Valier tries to engage into a nice conversation with her but fails as he does not get many responses from her side. Valier offers her crackers which the lady gladly accepts and starts eating. That's when Valier notices that she should be eating fast because of hunger but she is eating slowly. After some time, soldiers barges into the prison. They apologize to the lady for not being with her earlier to save her. First Valier thought that he had been exposed. Turns out the lady was princess of the first Guardia's empire named Charlotte de Guardias. Both of them were rescued and taken back into the camps of the Imperial Army. There the princess was warmly welcomed and both of them were offered a nicely cooked food. Her personal soldier Lance stays with her. Princess thanks to Valier for helping her in the prison. Valier was unable to process everything that has happened. The princess character was never mentioned in his novel, so he does not know what would happen to her. Then he was recused by the princess soldiers and now he is being treated nicely. But now he is getting too much attention which would made it difficult for him to escape the place without getting too much attention. The princess asks him about his hometown so that she could help him go back. This makes him nervous because he never had a hometown in fact he is the son of the demon king so what should he answer to the princess? Valier thinks that he should give such an answer to the princess which would help him get her on his side. So he decides to tell her that he has been traumatized a lot he cannot bring his mind at one place. The princess agrees and promises to help him regain her memory no matter what. Lance tries to stop the princess the instead of agreeing with Lance. She tells him to support her if he does not want her to look like a liar. Lancer apologizes and supports the princess in her decision. Both of them enjoys the dinner nicely while being surrounded by the guards. When Charlotte was done eating, she fakes her stomach ache and orders Lancer to bring a doctor for her. Lancer tells her that he cannot leave her alone as it is still dangerous for her. But then Charlotte reminds him that the Demon King is dead and she is safe so he must go. Lancer obliges and leaves to get a doctor for her. As soon as Lancer had left the place and Charlotte and Valier are alone, Valier notices that Charlotte vibe has changed. This surprised him as how a person could act so different in just a matter of moments. Charlotte takes a sip of tea and starts speaking. She tells him that she did save him however both of their destinies are joined now. He would have to die for her. Valier sits confusedly but Charlotte tells him that she cannot disclose the detail but she would be killed soon in the near future. They would possibly poison her and put the blame onto the Demon King and his prisons. And the moment she is killed they would come after him to erase every evidence. All of this would be done by her step-siblings. Charlotte tells him that everyone in the army boot camp is her enemy and she has no place to escape. But Charlotte makes a plan. She tells Valier to escape while she will get everyone's attention. If he succeeds he would have to help her. Valier agrees as he sneaks outside to execute the plan perfectly. We have a flashback of the time when Valier and Charlotte were having dinner. Charlotte tells him that there is only one way they would be able to stay alive. She gives him the mission to bring Sir Francis back. Valier asks about Sir Francis' identity, to which Charlotte tells him about the soldier who saved them from the prison. Valier still warns her that it could be a possibility that Sir Francis is also a traitor. Charlotte shows her full confidence in Sir Francis and tells him that it is not possible. If it was he would have never saved them. He is among the soldiers who are loyal to the actual Imperial family. Charlotte tells him about the plan she made. According to the plan she would create distraction among the soldiers so Valier could be able to escape. Valier on the other side should find Sir Francis and brings him in. Both of them agrees to the plan. 
Then Charlotte, according to plan, starts a distraction by requesting to walk around the areas. Meanwhile, Valier sneaks. In the current time, Valier is thinking about the place he should go if he wants to find Sir Francis. A soldier named Dyrus stops him and inquires about where he is heading to. Valier tells him that he wants to meet Sir Francis as it is an emergency. Dyrus tells him that Sir Francis left for the Demon Palace a few moments ago on the orders of the Commander Lance. This makes him confused as how Lance could have predicted Charlotte's plan and acted quickly. This tells him that he does not have enough time for himself and for the princess. Dyrus asks for more details. Valier has to create a story that will convince Dyrus to help him. So he tells him that Sir Francis and the princess's life might be in danger. This news does makes Dyrus freak out but he acts cool and asks for more details. So Valier comes up with a story then when Sir Francis was rescuing them he told the princess to be careful as anything could have happened to her. This was enough for Dyrus to help Valier. He asks him about him having any experience with horse riding. Sadly Valier didn't head one because he was the son of the demon prince. Dyrus flexes about his horse and tells him that he would take him to there. Unknown to Valier, the whole conversation was heard by Lance, who was standing behind the curtain. Dyrus brings his horse and both of them leaves the place. While on the way there Valier finds some demons getting arrested. So Valier asks about it. Dyrus tells him these are either local demons or people with low combat skills. They all would be taken to the headquarters where they would be executed. For a moment, Valier feels lucky because if he had messed up things, he would have been among those people. At night they arrive at the demon's palace. There the two of them were stopped by the soldiers on duty. Dyrus introduces him and asks the permission to meet Sir Francis to discuss the important matter. The soldiers tells they just got news that Sir Francis was killed during the war. Both of them were surprised as they heard the news. The commander in charge asks about the meaning behind them wanting to see Francis. However Dyrus it was a personal matter and there is nothing he should know. After which the commander in charge tells them to leave because the area might be too unsafe for them. Before walking away. Now both of them are alone so Dyrus asks about the reality. This makes Valier to think deeply. Because he was told by Charlotte that most of the army around her wants to kill her. Valier does not know whom should he trust but right now he does not have a chance. So Valier comes out clean he tells him that Sir Francis rescued them and it might be a possibility that Charlotte's life would be in danger. Valier quickly understand that it could be a possibility that Francis was ordered to go into the castle as a trap. After which he was murdered. Just as Charlotte said that they will erase out all the evidence even if that means killing everyone just to prove the princes didn't made out alive from the demon's castle. Dyrus who respected Francis a lot, offered his help. Valier thought it as a good opportunity although he could not trust him blindly but it is better than having no one. Dyrus suggests that they should just leave but Valier suggests that they should check the storage room to find something useful. Dyrus likes the idea and agrees. Both of them heads towards the storage room. Dyrus thinks that it would just be a waste of time as there is nothing they would find but Valier tells him to keep looking. Valier takes the magic book and all of its pages together as it would help him. This makes Dyrus to suspect him as how it would be possible for an ordinary human to know about the magic book and the way to the storage room. After getting his hands on the book, Valier suggests they should leave. While they were leaving Dyrus notices that someone is coming, so he asks Valier to hide behind the statue. It was no one other than the Knights of Silurian Duchy. They supported Bertus and wanted him to be the king. Most of the soldiers started supporting Bertus because of Silurian Duchy. These knights are not ordinary as they have special skills. While the knights feels their presence and one of the knights uses his ability to see where they were hiding. Valier and Dyrus were given the chance to surrender, but Dyrus didn't want that. While Valer was thinking if he would die here, he would have to do it all over again. Dyrus gets into a fight with the knights while Valier wishes that the statue started moving as it does in movies. To his surprise, the statue starts moving, and everyone stops fighting. The Silurian duchy knights were afraid, so they stepped back. Valier and Dyrus take this as an opportunity to run for their lives. Both of them ride the horse while the knights follow them. Dyrus tells him to sit tight as they have to get rid of the knights before they pass the jungle, while Valier opens his magic book and uses the magic spell Haste, which would make their horse faster, thus allowing them to have some distance between them. This works as their horse starts running fast. While thinking about his next step, Valier realizes that he wrote in his book that all of the soldiers are well trained, so magic cannot act upon them. This makes him frustrated, as he thought this was a way out. But he still remains calm and decides to use his magic tricks on the horse. Soon their horse started to get tired, so they had to slow down their journey. Valier notices a demon shackled behind bars. Valier felt a strange energy, just like when the statue started moving, as one of the demons activates beast mode and attacks the knight. Earlier, Valier suspected that among his powers was a power known as demon domination. 
which worked on the statue. Now this incident has confirmed Valier's suspicion because now he knows that the demons do get their energy. Dyrus starts suspecting him because he has the knowledge of using a magical book and has been saved twice by a demon. But he does not let these thoughts win over him because his main goal is now to save Princess Charlotte. In this way, both of them get out of the jungle and get rid of the knights. Soon they arrive at the camp where the princes are staying. When Dyrus and Valier were not granted access to meet Princess Dyrus works on his second plan. He serves himself as a distraction so that Valier could go inside and save the princess. When Valier walked in, the medics who were in there objected to his presence. But Valier asked Charlotte to close her eyes. As she does, he holds her hands. Valier and the princess then use the teleportation scroll to be teleported to Imperial Capital Guardium. Just as Valier uses this scroll, a notification pops up on his screen, telling him that the prologue is finished and now the story might end differently. Valier and Charlotte safely make it into the city of Guardium. This city came into being after Sol. Also, the real Ludwig had spent his childhood in this city, which is why he included it in his book. But when he arrived there, he was unable to comprehend that it was him who had written about a city in so much detail. Charlotte was just confused, so she asked about the events. When Valier started telling her about the main events, Dyrus arrived. It turns out that in Plan B when Valier would be able to be teleported with Charlotte, Dyrus, who was handed an extra teleportation scroll, would use it and arrive at the same place. The princess refuses to identify Dyrus, so Dyrus introduces himself. He asks the princess's permission to allow him to tell her about everything. Dyrus told everything to the princess as they were walking down the market. Valier, who was walking behind the two, thought that all of this would make him suspicious. He should get his way separated because sooner or later his identity would be revealed. So he makes his way and gets separated. Valier then sits on the side of the road with the magical book. There he was thinking that no one would even give him a penny. So he said to himself that there should be a way to get food and mana. Just as he completed his words, his request was accepted. A screen popped in front of him and told him that now he has to be careful with what he wishes because it will affect the future. Moreover, he would not be able to make adjustments with the existing setting. He has to complete some missions to get achievement points. When he looks at the list of tasks, they seem kind of stupid and difficult. In order to find a way to earn more achievement points, Valerie decides to search for more options. That's where he finds the advice option. He was advised that in order to get gold coins, he should sell the scroll he was left with. Valier agrees and gets up to find a place to sell the scroll. Everyone thought that a boy of his age was just pranking the shopkeepers and selling a fake scroll. He gets rejected four or five times. Then he gets into a shop, and the shop owner tells him that he would give him five silver coins if he could redraw more of these. Valier takes time to think and leaves, because he knew that the shopkeeper also thinks that he is selling a fake scroll. Finally, Valier heads into an empty shop. The shop was weird. The shopkeeper was a lady, who told him that she did not have scrolls to sell. Valier clears himself and tells her that he wants to sell one. When the lady looks at the scroll, she identifies it as one of the scrolls used by demons, so she asks Valerie to give her an explanation. Valier just put himself into a lot of trouble. The lady keeps asking him again and again, while he is thinking about the response he should be giving her. He asks the screen to help him, but it refuses. Valier starts telling her the story, but he only tells him that specific part of the story, which involves him being in a human prison and then being saved by the army, which wanted to kill him. Then he made his way back into the palace and ran towards the city. The story was not fascinating but it was enough for her to believe him. She hugs him to confront him, as he might have gone through a lot. Valier discloses that it was a lot, but he does not remember much of the spell. This makes the lady reverse the spell because the demon palace does induce spells on humans. Valier tries to stop her, but it is of no use as she is so focused. The reversing spell works as Valier gets into his old appearance. The lady recognizes him and bows in front of him. When Valier starts to question everything, she says that the conversation should be held in her room because it would be safer. The lady turns out to be among one of the armies of the demon king, named Elaris. Valier asks about her identity, so she reveals herself and introduces herself. She tells him that when the demon king lost the war, she and the remaining people had to settle in the city. She and two more vampires are here, secretly building their army. Elaris asks whether he remembers anything or not, and he tells her that he does not. However, this does not bother him because he wanted only his presence. Elaris recommends that they build up the army again and rule the world again. Valier thinks about it rationally and decides against it. He tells her that the army no longer exists, and he does not want to lead such an army now. This hurts her, so she asks him to rest while he leaves the room. At night, Valier sleeps in her bed while Elaris sits in the chair. Valier looks at her beautiful face and decides to meet with the rest of the army of demons, but he asks Elaris to take some sleep, although he was sleeping on her bed. Elaris lays down with him, 
This makes Valier uncomfortable, as none of this had been written in his novel. The next morning, Elaris and Valier head out of the city to meet the rest of the people. The whole city was cheering for the princess and enjoying their victory in the war, so it became easier for them to travel among the locals and get noticed. They left the Oligar district and got on the Mana train. Mana train helped them a lot, as they didn't have to cover a very long distance on foot. They head towards the south side of the Irene River. The place was full of lost garbage and some drunk men. To reach the bottom of the bronze door, they had to pass through a sewn line, which they called the bum's nest, Loyar, who was already present at their meeting spot, smells an aroma that sounds familiar to him. Elaris guides Valier through the route because it was very dark so that he would not get lost. Both of them arrived at the location where Loyar greets them. Loyar introduces himself. Elaris tells Loyar about Valier using all of his memory except for him being a demon's son. Loyar feels happy about it and tells Valier about the weird stuff he used to do with him. Valier apologizes and tells him that they should be on good terms and make new memories. Just as the two are talking, Sarkagar enters, running towards Valier. He falls onto him and starts crying, feeling lucky that he found him. Valier tells him to back off so he can breathe, but he isn't listening so Loyar comes to help. All of them then calm down to chat about what they should do. Loyar, Elaris, and Sarkagar requested that he make a stronger army and defeat the humans. Valier couldn't say no and agrees, so he asks if anyone has a plan or something. They suggest some plans, but Valier does not like them, as it would not be good because the war just ended. They tell him that he has to do whatever it takes because he is an Archimon. When Valier asks what this is, Elaris tells him that long ago, demons and vampires used to fight among themselves. Then came a type of demon who stopped all these fights. They were given the title of Archimon out of respect. Valier suggests that, for the time being, he should stay in the capital and observe human behavior to come up with a plan. Sarkagar tells him to get admission into the temple, the capital's educational institution. Elaris gives him a ring, which would help him change his appearance. Also, Elaris suggests that Valier should adopt the new identity so that he would not be suspected. Valier changes his name to Reinhardt. Loyar takes Reinhardt to his elder brother, Davon, so that he could get an ID, which would help in his admission. Davon praises his efforts for a child but asks if they have figured out a way to pay fees. This makes them surprised, as they didn't think that going to the temple would cost them money. Reinhardt asks about the matter, so Davon tells him that the tuition fees would be around $100.000, which is too much for them. He further explains to him that it is one of the institutions where rich kids are going so the tuition fees are higher than expected. As Loyar sells candy for his cover, she does not earn much to be able to afford it. Reinhardt comes up with an idea and tells him to arrange money for just one semester, after which he would be able to use his skills to get a scholarship. Although he is a low-grade demon, he has some powers that he can use. Loyar loves the idea, but Davin tells her that the admission fees alone are very high, so they need to come up with a new plan. Loyar asks about the earnings, and Davin tells her that as most of the customers are not coming, they are not able to make enough money. Davin comes up with a plan to attract customers. He suggests that they should sell toys on the Mantra train, where parents would be forced to buy toys for their children against their will. In this way, they would make a lot of profit. Loyar finds the idea perfect and praises Davin for being smart. Davin tells Reinhardt not to worry about the money, as he would do anything to let him enter the temple. At night, Reinhardt and Davin go to meet the rest of the group that Loyar has built. All of the members welcome Reinhardt openly. All of them drink together and have a great time, during which it becomes clear to Reinhardt that Loyar might have a side business because selling candies would not be enough for her to support the group and her infiltration. He tries asking Davin, but he changes the topic. Loyar finds them both drunk, so she brings them home. She asks Reinhardt not to get drunk and do anything messy, so he finally asks about the side business. She tells him that they help the beggar's gang as a job, but she refuses to give more details. The next morning, Reinhardt and Davin go to the temple. They went to the admission office. There, Reinhardt notices the career counseling center and tells Davin that if anyone surpasses the test, they will be given a scholarship, but the changes are pretty slim. While at the information desk, Reinhardt tries to pay for his one-month fees, but the lady tells him that they do not accept it anymore. Davin tells Reinhardt to go for the career counseling test, and he does, although he didn't want to because he thought it might blow up his cover. As a test, he had to lay his hands on the globe, which would generate results. When the results came out, the lady thought that the machine malfunctioned, so she brought a new one. The next globe showed the same result, so she decided to tell them. According to the results, Reinhardt had an aptitude for everything in the world. Aptitude is a level below skill. One who has the aptitude can gain the upper hand on the skill if they work on it. The results were so surprising, and as expected, Reinhardt was given admission to the temple. He was given his seat in the elite class. A class was the elite class of the temple. The students had some talent but were rude. 
Also, Ludwig was a transfer student to class he proved himself different, but somehow died. Reinhardt and Daven go to see Loyar. He congratulates him and tells him that he will be able to crack this and that he should not think about this too much. These words do not help Reinhardt very much, so he goes to see Elleris. He describes everything to Elleris, and Elleris tells him to calm down. He slowly realizes that he can learn whatever skill he chooses, and for this reason, he was given an aptitude for everything. He shares this information with Elleris. Elleris calms him down and tells him that she will be there for him in every way possible. She shows him the bag of clothes she prepared for him. Reinhardt asks her if he changes his mind and wants to have a new war. As a response to the question, she gives him his necklace, and Reinhardt asks the reason behind it and its significance. So Elleris tells her that although she called herself Tuesday, it was not because he came into the shop on Tuesday. It was because, a long time ago, there were seven clans of vampires known as the Seven Knights. Sunday and Monday, two of the clans vanished, and their magic was long gone. But the rest of the five clans kept practicing their magic and passed it on to their generations and generations. She tells him that she is the head of the clan on Tuesday, among the Seven Knights, and the necklace she gave him is very important. It is known as the Flame of Tuesday. It is the symbol of their clan. She gave it to him so that he could be protected. The intensity of the fire depends upon his abilities to use fire. When Reinhardt uses it, the fire has a very low intensity, so he asks the reason behind it, and Elleris tells him that the intensity depends on the person he is using it on. Reinhardt felt impressed, so he promised to take care of it and not use it before his graduation. She asks him to try using the fire so he may have some practice. After meeting with Elleris, Reinhardt goes again to see Loyar. Loyar gives him a lot of money. He tells him that this money was his admission fee, but now that he has his scholarship, he should spend it however he likes. Reinhardt says his thanks and tells him that he will use it wisely. At night, Reinhardt was sleeping peacefully when, in the middle, he woke up to realize that he wrote this novel for his audience, which wanted a nice, relaxing novel. But soon Ludwig was out of ideas, and the story began when a door to another world opened, destroying everything. By remembering this, Reinhardt knows that something is about to go down. Reinhardt knows that he made the world a mess because he ran out of ideas, and now he has to be the one who sorts things out for the world. First, he thought he should run away, but then he felt that no one should be paying for his deed. Reinhardt comes up with the idea that when the gate would open in the temple, he would use his skills to close it or personally fight with the demons. The next day, when Reinhardt goes to the school, an announcement is made that tells the newcomers to show their acceptance letter and college ID to enter. After entering the college, he couldn't help but think about how beautiful the place is, and there is no way he would have made all that up. Another announcement says that there will be a welcome party for the newcomers, and they should be present at the venue. All the newcomers, along with their baggage, gathered around the palace. Reinhardt meets a girl named Ceres Van. She asks him to show his card so that she can tell him about his room and its direction. When he reaches his room, he is unable to believe that he has such a big dorm. He finds a box wrapped like a present. Inside the box were some dorm instructions, a pen, and a book. So Reinhardt decides to use the resources and writes down everything he saw that needs to be written, including every character that he remembered from his class. While he was doing so, another announcement told students to gather around. On the ground, Reinhardt somehow meets Ludwig. He finds it amazing and it feels real to him that now, finally, he is in his character. The party starts when the lady tells everyone to introduce themselves so that they can know each other. Among all the other students, Bertus is the one Reinhardt finds surprising because Bertus was supposed to be in his class, but not in his real life. When he introduced himself, everyone started gossiping about him which made him feel uncomfortable. Moreover, when Reinhardt looked clearly at the lady, he was amazed to know that the lady was none other than Charlotte herself. It seems like she does not remember him. The proof of the scenario was that no member of the royal family except Bertus and Charlotte could enter the temple without displaying their talents. It was because of this reality that evidence of skills and talents was required to access the holy temple. Bertus' first step in realizing his dreams was to graduate with high marks, which alone would grant him enormous authority, and he would ultimately become Bertus de Guardias, who would be entering the royal palace. The novel scene did not depict the royal prince and princes visiting the palace in the same year. Well, I believe the novel's plot would have been altered if I and the royal princes had to die. Furthermore, the identity of the prince was supposed to be kept hidden, but it was disclosed from the start. Despite the fact that I created the character, the story still gives me chills. After Duke Silurian expounds money on him, the original Bertus character awakens three skills within him. These three skills were picked after extensive research and were deemed required for advancement to the master class. These three were combat talent, magic sensitivity and mana control. 
Becoming the master class was impossible without these three talents. With these attributes, Burtis would become a sword master. The story shouldn't deviate from the novel's plot in any way. Charlotte de Guardias, the first princess, is the source of this issue. My initial assumption was that the prince and the princess would belong to the same royal class. She is a B1 in class B1 might guess that if she is not talented as Burtis to be in class A even if the prince shouldn't be in class A1 based on skill. It would be awkward to put them both in the same class. Interestingly, one may also speculate that if the royal family members had entered the school for the first time, the staff would have felt uneasy. All right, now that the introduction is through, let's go on to the royal class rules. Except in cases where someone is distinguished on the basis of class. Every high degree noble or noble person is regarded equally in the royal class and in the temple. The functionality of the temple was the peaceful relations among the students. And if you cause tensions in the temple because of your status, an immediate warning will be issued on behalf of the student council president and an accumulation of warnings will result in a faulty meeting, which may result in your expulsion. Charlotte read a letter on behalf of the Guardias in which it was stated that any harm done to Bertus or Charlotte would result in the other party's permanent disqualification from the throne. The letter is written to all and sundry as a lesson to treat each other's lives as if they were your own in order to complete your faith. The letter could indicate that Charlotte and Bertus will not fight for the time being. Bertus, your highness, how a fight is not possible, but equality is the law here. The grapes of Northwest Lefrari are well known. Bertus met Erich de Lefrari, a highly intelligent and nine student. The emperor drank grape wine from Lefrari which he linked a lot. Meanwhile, Bertus asked Erich to stop by as part of his general salutation to his colleagues. Bertus stated, I'd like to apologize because you appeared to be in a one student but was misplaced by the administration. Bertus pushes Ellen, a bright a two student, to a two despite his superior abilities. Bertus inquired about Ellen's genuine surname, learning that it was Artorius. Ellen was Ragan Artorius's younger sister, and he was the hero who sacrificed himself to defeat the Demon King. In the meanwhile, Ludwig left. It was the time of the first event. The main character of the story gets a mark on his back for seamlessly talking to an A1 student. Ludwig and Reinhardt exchange pleasantries at this point. Harriet de St. Owen is dissatisfied with being referred to as an A4 student, so she has a quarrel with him and is summoned by the Royal Highness. On the next busy day during their regular walk Bertus mumbled to Ludwig that Harriet de St. Owen, an A4 student and the daughter of Duke St. Owen, had to appear nice for the prince because of her magical skill. Harriet de St. Owen who was also there, was concerned by his words. Then Bertus greeted Ludwig and pointed to the presence of an emotionally sensitive friend indicating Harriet de St. Owen. Ludwig then praised the prince's royal personality in front of Bertus, who listened intently. Meanwhile, Bertus gained 100 points for unlocking his first achievement on the first day at the temple. This startled him because he thought the achievement had been unlocked because he had listened to Ludwig being told of it. Soon after, he recognized subcategories of talents under the main menu, which included abilities such as archery, supernatural abilities, swordsmanship, weapon mastery, and magic sensitivity, each with a different point value, and only one had to be chosen based on the points earned in the first achievement. This circumstance irritated him because he had received very few points and could not unlock numerous accomplishments at the same time. He soon calmed himself and acknowledged that he could only utilize those 100 ponnets to unlock one category. Initially, he had superhuman abilities, but, after further consideration, he realized that supernatural abilities are difficult to manage and require repetitive training, as well as the fact that when they first manifest, they are quite feeble. He decided to accumulate more points in order to purchase supernatural talents and went with the flow of time. It was the time of the entrance ceremony which although was held separately for the royal's procedure was quite simple. According to Bertus, the procedure included the introduction to the home class teacher by the headmaster. Then they led the private class buildings which were near the dorm's room. During his class, he started thinking that the ceremony was quite simple. H deliberated more on it whether the ceremony was simple so that it was the same for both prince and princess. In the meanwhile, the homeroom teacher for class A arrived. The homeroom teacher introduced himself as Eppenhauser. The homeroom teacher informed the class that there will be common classes on Mondays and Thursdays while everyone will be taken to their pre-registered classes on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays. The homeroom teacher called on Bertus as a one and made temporarily gave him the charge of class management leader whose main function was to convey suggestions. In the case of the replacement of the leader, the homeroom teacher had to be timely informed. There was an exception to a one role that the homeroom teacher had to be consulted in the event of a deadly quarrel because it was his responsibility to keep the peace. The homeroom instructor instructed the pupils to look out for one another and to be conscious of the talents of others who may later develop in them. One of the students inquired of the teacher what would occur if needed to be consulted. 
The teacher replied hesitantly that you will be subjected to special management, of which you were all informed. This is because, in addition to being valuable assets of the empire, you are all harmful to yourselves. The special management case empowered the homeschool teacher to punish kids subject to such management. Another student questioned the teacher's authority in resolving quarrels and claimed the teacher was a killer, to which the teacher responded while praising himself for his own 10 years of service in dealing with student disengagements. All of a sudden the teacher asked the 11 whose name was Reinhardt to follow him towards his office. Despite his boundless potential and aptitude, Eleven's homeschool teacher told him that he lacks talent, while citing other students with talents, such as a three grants, who had supernatural talents and would be taking the corresponding talents classes, and Cliffman a five, who had combat talent and would be taking those classes. He told Reinhardt that the other classmates were ahead and had defined talents and paths, whereas Reinhardt, despite his aptitude, was perplexed. The teacher stated that what Reinhardt desired was not compatible with his aptitude. This put Reinhardt in the position of wondering whether or not the teacher was attempting to assist him. The teacher went on to explain that he had seen similar cases before, but Reinhardt was better than them because he knew what he wanted to do. Reinhardt told the homeschool teacher that he wanted to master supernatural abilities because they were simple. This irritated the homeschool teacher, who reminded Reinhardt that anyone studying supernatural talents, with the exception of the royal family, could not attend classes and would be dismissed if they could not prove themselves. The homeschool teacher then handed Reinhardt the schedule for the week's classes and told him that supernatural abilities are difficult to manifest and that he had already taken one conventional session. Reinhardt assumed the teacher was correct as he returned to his class. As he walked in, he was perplexed to see everyone staring at him as if a joke was scrawled on his face. Furthermore, Reinhardt was subjected to a barrage of questions from his classmates about whether or not he possessed any talents. He was mocked for being admitted to the royal class, which included students with extraordinary talents. Soon after, this encounter devolved into a squabble with Kair who was an A-10 with big modern reserves, to which Reinhardt responded forcefully, I am here because the admissions department admitted me, so questioning my admissions is stupid. The argument became increasingly heated, and Reinhardt was chastised for his lack of talent. Kair's relentless gaze at Reinhardt made him extremely anxious, and at this time, Reinhardt began to doubt himself, wondering if he would be constantly labeled as a talentless person. Bertus had asked Harriet about her talents in the dining room. Yes, she said. She has mana control and magical awareness. Meanwhile, Ludwig and Charlotte had a brief talk in which Ludwig requested that Charlotte recuperate as soon as possible. Reinhardt then reasoned that as an introvert, he would never be noticed in a group of extroverts who can do their tasks well. It was the time of physical activity and everyone had to complete running on the ground. Some students, previously not habitual found the activity difficult. Your elementary education has ended, and there is no time to mourn about it, said the trainer. You are free to go whenever you wish. The trainer often reminded the kids of the need for physical exercise, which was equally necessary for everyone regardless of talent. The trainer informed them that if they did not reach the Empire's requirements, they would be banished. A three student was having problems running because she was continually lectured by the trainer that if she couldn't run, she would die soon despite being a magician. Meanwhile, Ludwig and Reinhardt were sprinting, and Reinhardt knew that he would have to keep up with the other active members. Reinhardt also saw Elin, who had tremendous stamina, and the only thing Ludwig and Ellen had in common was stamina. The training was rigorous. The A3 student complained about the difficulty of training during laps. Reindit spotted Charlotte sitting alone and silently while unwell. The laps training was extremely challenging and Reinhardt could observe students doing extraordinarily well while also knowing that slackness during the training could result in a penalty of 10 more laps. Following the instruction, all of the kids went for a shower in the toilet, where they discussed how this year's class is mixed. Reinhardt was the target of the remark since he was unable to match everyone's stamina during physical training. A student in the sauna room informed Reinhardt that this program of physical training had to be followed every Thursday, and he appeared to be physically unfit for the training. Reinhardt responded severely to the student since as the student was he could play like the big one over there, and the student quickly pushed Reinhardt in reprisal to demonstrate his might. He continued to insult Reinhardt, claiming that he should not be in the A1 class with these talented students because he lacked talent. This dispute quickly evolved into a violent brawl, and Reinhardt responded to the student with a strong punch before brutally beating him because of the disrespectful remarks he shouted for Reinhardt which were actually against the temple's equality regulations. Both of them kept fighting while the whole class was trying their best to stop them. At last the students were forced to call in the teacher who separated the both of them. 
They were called in the principal office. The principal asked about the matter. Kerr told the half-truth that it was Reinhardt who started all of this. Reinhardt was annoyed because both of them are in front of the principal because of a student of B2. Loyus Anxham. When Reinhardt was asked about it, he agrees but starts from the starts. He chooses his words very carefully and tells that Kerr disrespected the temple and the empire. All he did was to tell it to Kerr that what he thinks is not true. Though Reinhardt agrees that the method he used was very harsh and he shouldn't have done it that way. So he apologized for his behavior. The principal asked his to explain how did Kerr disrespected the institution. To which Reinhardt told him that Kerr was telling him and everyone else that Reinhardt got admission into the class unfairly. And the temple is not fair. Principal asked to confirm from Kerr. He didn't have much of a choice but to accept. Reinhardt did all of this because he knew that the principal is loyal to the estate and the temple. He would not let anyone disrespect it. But he is also fair to his students. Reinhardt trick worked as the principal asked him to leave so that he may talk to Kerr alone. When Reinhardt returned to the class he noticed that everyone was gossiping about them. After some time principal came in and asked to collect forms from those who had done filling it. Most of the students were done with it so they handed over before going to the cafeteria. While Reinhardt was among the students who were still working on their form. Suddenly Reinhardt hears Erich was bullying a girl because of the girl having red eyes and hair. The red hair and eyes were a symbol of evil according to Eleris. Later it was thought as a symbol for the continuation for being in a Tremendos. The girl was also a Tremendos but she didn't knew it. Hickmendos is that type of the demons who established peace when demon used to fight among each other. Reinhardt was also a Tremendos. She was abandoned by her parents at a very young age and thought that she had no other place to go. Which is why she listens to everyone to bullies her. Ludwig always helps her in difficult time. Reinhardt thinks that Ludwig and the girl should become friends or the bullying will never stop. Reinhardt then tries to update his abilities but fails to do so. So he understands the reason that he was being too powerful earlier has its consequences. Reinhardt sees the list of the talent he can buy. Among them he sees a very unique option self-suggestion. He took as he thought it would be cool to use it in this world. After he purchased the talent he discovered that he was on level 0 and the skill should be unlocked. This means that he just wasted his achievement points on a useless skill. To make up for that he has to get achievement points as soon as possible so that he can buy a new talent. For this Reinhardt decides to look at the list of the challenges list. Among them he finds one a very interesting and decides to do it. For this he decides to go to Temple Market. It is a place where most of the Temple students hangs out most of the time. Koyer, Kono and Erich are also present in the Temple Market having food. The three of them became friends because of their hate for Reinhardt. While eating Erich tells everyone about how Reinhardt changed his words and it got him into trouble. Suddenly a lady approaches to Kono. She shows him a letter that confesses the love Kono he has for her. Kono falls into her trap and tells her about his love for her. He promises to wait for her for the rest of the life as the lady runs away. Erich and Koyer feels jealous as each one of them thinks that they are more attractive than them and it should be them not him. While Reinhardt who demon is a graceful lady was able to complete the task and earn some achievement points. Reinhardt sits for some time to contemplate on his actions. He does not feel good as he would have to break a young heart of a teenager. Except the fact that the guy does not like him. He still cannot break his heart. He needs 1000 more achievement points to buy a new talent. Now all the task he has left will result in either serious punishment from the temple or his being suspended from the temple except one. He has to propose to one of his classmates and gets rejected. But Reinhardt does not want to do this because it would be embarrassing yet he does not have any more options. So he decides to go for it although it is embarrassing. Reinhardt tells himself that he would be fine. He had sold his soul earlier and this time he has to put his dignity to store. Reinhardt then thinks about the person he should propose and does not feel too embarrassed if she reject him. Then he gets up and dresses up to meet Ellen Artorius. Role number a two. He chose her because even if he proposes and gets rejected no one will remember this so it would not is too much embarrassing for him. Reinhardt walks in just to see Ellen practicing her moves up to perfection. Reinhardt walks in so Ellen stops her practice in the middle to pay attention to him. He gives her a letter in which he expressed all of his feelings. He asks her to read it but she declines. Reinhardt expected this response so he does not feel bad instead he turns his back and goes back home. In this way he was able to complete his another task without much of a humiliation. Next day, a normal day in Reinhardt as he goes to temple to attend his lecture. It was that their swordsmanship lecture and practice classes were combined. And during both of that Reinhardt was sitting with Ellen. During the lecture Reinhardt kept telling himself that whatever he did was to get achievement points for his talent but somehow there was something he couldn't get off his mind. After the lecture was the training session. Reinhardt was performing very carefully so the instructor confirmed him being a class a student. Reinhardt confirms it so the instructor announces a practice match between Ellen and Reinhardt, and both of them are class a student. 
This made everyone very excited except Reinhardt because Ellen was near perfection and he was unable to hold a sword correctly. Ellen agreed which left Reinhardt with no other choice. The rest of the students gathered around them and it down. The students started chatting about who will win the round, as they were watching a friendly match between the elites for the first time. Everyone made their guess about who is better. All of this made Reinhardt very uncomfortable. The more he listens to the students' gossips the more pressured he feels. The instructor tells Reinhardt that it would a friendly match which means that he would be allowed to walk out at any time. Both of them were advised to take their positions. When the instructor announced that the game has started, Reinhardt just blinked his eye and Ellen attacked him on his head. Due to the injury he fell unconscious. After the period was over, Ellen took him to the infirmary. She sat down the entire time when he was unconscious. When he gained consciousness she tells him about what happens. Ellen helps him get up and walk. For some time, Reinhardt thinks that it could be due to the letter he gave earlier. Or it could be the reason that she feels bad for hitting him on the head so badly. Reinhardt backs himself from her support and tells her that he can walk on his own. He comes up with a plan. Ellen told him that it is lunch time. He then suggests her that they should eat together. In the temple market, he takes her to the east side with which he was very familiar when he was roaming around. He then takes her to eat Chenggyujang. This is an traditional dish. First Ellen was reluctant to eat but Reinhardt forced her to do so. Even though she didn't like the taste but she was so hungry that she decided to eat all of it. After Ellen had took a bite, Reinhardt decides to eat it with kimchi as it was the traditional dish he used to eat a lot with kimchi. After eating the whole Ellen tells him that she would never eat this again. The next morning, Reinhardt gets very busy with his classes. His first class was of magic theory. He was not able to understand a thing the teacher taught him. Yet he told him that, that he knows that the syllabus is quite easy right now but it would get difficult with time. As they move forward, the next class magic sensitivity training, during which while the instructor was telling students about everything, he was sleeping. After the period was over he tells everyone that he feels good and relaxed after which he had his last supernatural ability control class. Charlotte was also present in that class. In that class she was the first one to show the instructor that she is finally able to know her powers. Slowly and gradually everyone became known of their powers in the class except for Reinhardt. So he stood on the bench the whole time because his skills were not activated. One of his classmates soon join and Reinhardt tells her to give him a difficult situation which may help him enable his abilities. But instead both of them falls asleep. After the class Ludwig approaches Reinhardt. He tells him to either be serious or don't take the class every again. Reinhardt tries his best to avoid any debate and tells him that he should get himself going. Ludwig told Reinhardt that he is just a bi with an infinite aptitude but that should not mean that he gets to do anything he wishes. But Ludwig was not in mood. He planned to set him on fire. Every time Ludwig approached him, Reinhardt hits at his forehead and tells him to back off. After Ludwig did this several times Reinhardt had enough he easily punches Ludwig to ground and tells him to stay away. He clears himself that all he want to do is just take classes in peace. But if he would do anything like that again it would not be good for him. At dinner time, no one was sitting with Reinhardt and everyone was gossiping about him. Everyone supposed that all they should do is to stay away from Reinhardt because he would kill anyone who would come near him. Suddenly Bertus approaches him. He asks for permission to sit down for some time and have a chat. Bertus takes him to the balcony so they both can talk alone. Bertus offers Reinhardt tea which he accepts, after which they both start talking. Bertus tells him the reason he called him over is that many students are afraid of him. Reinhardt thinks that it might be a joke but Bertus tells him that his anger is what people are scarred off. Bertus thinks that Care was at fault too because he was very harsh with his words. But the way Reinhardt handled this was also quite hard. Bertus appreciates his love for the temple and for the kingdom. He asks the reason behind his love for temple. Reinhardt tells him that there is no reason to hate it. He is an ordinary poor person. Completing his sentence Reinhardt assumes that now Bertus would like to stay away. Instead Bertus tells him that he likes it. Bertus changes the conversation and asks about if any family is backing him up or if he belongs to any royal family. Reinhardt denies both of them. Bertus couldn't trust him because how so an innocent person was so brave to take up his anger on a royal family. Reinhardt reassures him and decides not to tell him being a demon's prince. Reinhardt tells him that he is not a coward who would hide behind rich families to show his anger. Bertus trusts Reinhardt this time, but is still sure that he is hiding something. He tells Reinhardt that he knew that he does not comes from the royal family because of the way he is holding teacup. He just wanted to confirm it and listen from him. Bertus asks him if he is known about the consequences he would have to face because he got in a fight with a member of Schwartz's family. Reinhardt tells him that he does but the fact that he knows that now he is in the gifted class. As per rules no one can kill the gifted students. Plus according to him Heinrich is not as brave as he looks like. Bertus tells him that Heinrich still used the family name to harm him. To this response Reinhardt decides to stay quiet though he knows the fact that the Schwartz family abandoned him long time ago. 
Burtis has started to like Reinhardt because of him being outspoken and brave. Reinhardt finds it strange because Burtis is the villain of the story. It is quite odd for him to be liked by the villain. Burtis asks Reinhardt that does he knows the classes that exists among ants. Reinhardt tells him that he does that's when Burtis tells him that he does not care whether the other person is rich or poor. He is powerful which is all that matters. Burtis still does not believe that a smart person like Reinhardt lives in the street. So Reinhardt tells him that every type of person exists. But this was not enough for Burtis. So he tells him that he would figure out the truth sooner or later. Burtis tells him to control his anger issues. Reinhardt tells him he would work on it as he wants to settle among others. Burtis ends their conversation after he tells Reinhardt that he needs to prove his loyalty so that they both could talk freely about other matters. Finally the first weekend has arrived and Reinhardt would be able to survive the first five days. It's been two days since he met with Burtis and the rumors about him have stopped. But no one wants to talk to him except Ludwig from Class B although other students keeps telling him to stay away or he would harm him. It looks like Ludwig does not care about any of this. Reinhardt does have anything much to do in his dorm so he decides to meet up with his gang and tells them about everything they should know. So he leaves the temple and meets Loyar under the bridge. Loyar greets him and then both heads to take a seat. Loyar tells him that they got the news that the prince and the princess have also joined. She asks about their behavior. Reinhardt tells her that the prince is nice which is quite odd and he hasn't been able to be in contact with the princess as much. Reinhardt tells Loyar that he has a task for her in Sarkigar. They need to find about the princess talent which is being kept a secret. To Reinhardt this is quite awkward but important as he is being close to the princess. Loyar takes the responsibility. She tells asks him not to meet Elleris or Sarkiger directly. It looks strange for Reinhardt so he asks about the reason. Loyar tells him that some people just followed him and she does not want that he should be seen hanging out with the beggars. After meeting with her, he walks towards temple again. That's when he feel bad for letting people follow him. Just as he enters into the temple hallway, his classmates surrounds him. They make fun of him meeting with the beggars, while Reinhardt tells them to be careful because he has seen the most difficult times of the street. He even tells them that if anyone ever followed him again he would pluck out their eyes, and the last thing those eyes would be seeing is Reinhardt's face. His classmates are still not able to understand about the reason of him being so confident and arrogant. They let him pass through. Reinhardt enters in his room and lays on bed. He then thinks about the two who followed him and upon whose orders they did this. Not only this, Reinhardt is also being surrounded by another issue. He still hasn't figured out a way to activate the talent he brought. Reinhardt was busy thinking about all that when Ellen knocks on his door. Reinhardt answers the door and asks the reason of her presence. She tells him that he has to come with her as they both are called in gym by a senior. Reinhardt decides to there where all the classmates who were bullying him are present. The senior asks him to take the position but Reinhardt asks the reason she wants him to obey to her. The girl name was Redina. She stood in shock as Reinhardt refused to obey to her. She tries threatening him but instead it didn't work. When Reinhardt threatened her, she left the room out of anger. Just as she left, Reinhardt told the bullies to stand normally. He asked one of them about how it happened. All the boy told them that she approached them and took them to here. She asked up to do and we did as she told. Reinhardt told his classmates to have some guts and start speaking for themselves. He places himself a essay example and tells him that he is a beggar but he has guts to speak for himself. When Reinhardt was about to leave one of his classmates stops him. She asks him to take the responsibility if anything goes wrong because they were obeying to the orders they were given. He was the one who stood against everything, so it should be him to pay the price. Reinhardt does not take her seriously and decides to walk on her. Just as he is doing this, Redina brings her classmates. Reinhardt makes fun of her because she acted like a child who brings her elder brother when she loses an argument. Her male classmate asks for Reinhardt. He supposes that Reinhardt must have belonged from a noble family or a rich family. But Reinhardt tells him that he is a beggar. This gives the student enough courage so he starts beating him up. Reinhardt takes one of two punches but after those he decides to turn the tables. He takes the matter into his hand and makes the student fell onto floor. He makes the male student to beg for mercy and if he does not do so or someone interferes he would send him to the hospital. He does as told and lets him go. Radina takes him away on shoulders. All of the senior and junior students except for Adrena. She tries making a nice conversation with Reinhardt but he was not in mood. So she asked him again to be respectful with her as she just want to talk and they are alone. Reinhardt calms down and talks to her nicely. She tells him about Redina and how she has a very loving a polite nature. But she was forced to the ragging as the seniors were pressurizing. For this they elected her as the representative. If she wouldn't have done it the seniors would have been doing it. Then the situation might have gotten out of the hand. As this ragging tradition was passed from generation to generation. Reinhardt tells her that he does not care and her seniors should meet the Prince Bertus, as they night want to face him, but they should not disturb him on any random night. She should pass my message to them that he would be waiting on Monday night for them. They should not be late for meeting them. Reinhardt returns to meet Bertus later that evening. 
He explains everything to him, even how he used his identity to benefit himself. Bertus admits that he has always been aware of the temple and its customs, but he believes that it was because of him that no one had the courage to perform these rites with him. He disapproves of Reinhardt exploiting his name as protection. What would happen if they actually showed up? Bertus queries him. He would have been the one placing the order, not someone else, says Reinhardt. Bertus is aware that he used his name as a prince rather than one of his peers. He most likely knew that nobody would be smart enough to use it against the prince. Bertus claims that he would have given the order to kill his three generations if someone else had used his identity to seek refuge. Yet, considering this was the first time and Reinhardt was the one who did it, although he would be ready to pardon, he would also need something more. Reinhardt is aware of what Bertus would have asked him to do, yet he chooses to do the opposite. Hence, Bertus advises him to enroll in school with Charlotte is half-sister, if he notices something suspicious. He must immediately alert him. Reinhardt shares a cup of tea with him before leaving as he makes his way back. While on his way he starts thinking about Harriet because she had the nerves to take it all to Bertus. Suddenly Reinhardt sees Harriet sitting alone drinking her cup of tea. He stands to take a look at her, but she instead of being nice shows him the attitude. This makes Reinhardt think about being mischievous to her. He starts calling her idiot. She does not like that. Every time Reinhardt uses the word in front of her she would react to it every time. Harriet asks him why he does keep calling her that. He responds by saying that he keeps doing it because he enjoys seeing her response when he does it. He leaves her surprised after making fun of her for a while, given that it is Monday. The next week has officially begun. When Reinhardt returns to class in the morning assembly, his superiors approach him once more. Arts, a member of a noble family, was responsible this time. He requests a fair duet so that he may repair his reputation. He is told by Reinhardt that he would not be carrying it out. If he doesn't want to be a part of his failure, Arts advises him to accept it. Nonetheless, Reinhardt accepts the invitation to the pair match this time. Everyone is surprised by this since nobody would have predicted this from him. Artists warn him not to trust anybody since he could fall for their tactics once more. The seniors adjourn from class. He runs into Adrena. She discusses the arts with him and advises him to consider his options. Adrena advises him to make amends to arts and put an end to the conflict. Artists assured her that if he apologized, everything would be over. Reinhardt remains submissive and assures her that he is unable to harm her. He agreed to the combat because he could utilize his mental strength to maybe unlock the talent he brought. Reinhardt is nonetheless anxious, but he is unable to convey this to anybody. The duel was set to happen in the next two weeks in the dormitory. He tells the instructor about the duel because he was supposed to look over this situation. A screen pops in front of Reinhardt which tells him about his task to fight with Arts. Even the system thinks that it would be very hard for him to beat him. That's why they offered 600 points if he wins and 200 if he losses. Meaning now at all costs he must take part irrespective of the outcome. Once again Reinhardt has become the hot gossip of the temple. Everyone starts gossiping about him and his fight with Arts. Two boys were discussing the situation while running in the ground from where Charlotte hears it. She decides to find Reinhardt and gives him an envelope. When he hands it over to him Reinhardt starts calling out for her for an explanation, but to no avail. In the letter Charlotte has asked him to stay in the class because she has to talk to her. According to the instructions Reinhardt does what Charlotte asked. After some time, she came. When Reinhardt asked her to give her an explanation, she told him to be quiet as she knows about his identity. For a moment, Reinhardt felt like the princess knew about his being the demon's son. He remains calm and asks her to get straight to point. Then Charlotte tells him that the moment she heard that he was a beggar, she decided to look into his personal life, from where he belongs, the people he knows and everything about him. That's when she was able to discover of him being supported by Rotary Gang which was supported by Thieves Gang. Reinhardt tries to speak but Charlotte tells him do not dare to do so. If he does not accept these facts or tries to do something else, she would order the city guards to start the sewage cleaning project which means that everyone would be kicked out. Reinhardt asks her what she wants, so Charlotte shows him the sketch of Valier. She asks him to find him. She wants to know if he is alive or dead. If he has died then how he died and where would she be able to find her body? Reinhardt was surprised to see the princess reaction but even more surprised to see the sketch of his previous self. Charlotte continues speaking to him and told him to focus on this every day and he must update about him to her every day. He should not be focusing around something else. After talking to him, Charlotte leaves the classroom. Reinhardt goes to his room and keeps thinking about his meeting with Charlotte. The meeting with Charlotte has made him quite uncomfortable. He sees that Charlotte is desperately looking for Valier the one who saved his life but she is not thinking about it rationally. Because if she would she should have been suspicious of him. The disappearance of Valier and the appearance of Reinhardt are side by side. But still, seeing her sad and broken makes Reinhardt feel bad because he was lying to her for a very long time. Harriet walks in to talk to Reinhardt. She tells him to apologize to him, as it would benefit him. 
because she has learned from other people that Arts is very bad at beating and would die if he beat him. Reinhardt still remains confident that he won't be able to do such a thing. This makes Harriet annoyed, so she leaves him alone while telling him that she would come watch him get beaten up. After she leaves, Reinhardt decides to practice for the duel, which is due in two weeks, so he decides to go to the swordsmanship dormitory. Ellen and another student were already practicing, so he also picked up a sword and started to practice. After doing it for hours, Reinhardt decides to take some rest. He looks at his hands and realizes that it was not as easy as he thought it would be. Just as he is taking a rest, a senior walks in. She was Adrena's friend. She tells him that Adrena wanted me to help him. She also advises him to back off, but he stands firm on his point. She tries telling him that Art is not a bad person like he thinks, so he should apologize. Reinhardt tells her that he never said he was a bad person. He just wanted this fight, and he would not be saying sorry to him. Seeing him as reluctant, she picks up the sword that was left by Reinhardt and does some movies. After doing so, she asks him to copy what he just did. Reinhardt couldn't believe it, so he asked again to confirm, and his senior told him to do it. Reinhardt agrees as he gets up and takes up the sword. However, Reinhardt couldn't, so he fell. First, his senior thought that he was just messing around. But then she held her hand and realized that his muscles were fatigued. Reinhardt tells her to let go of her as it does hurt his pride. While she is senior, she remains calm and uses her magic to relieve muscle pain and fatigue. She tells him that she wants to be a paladin. Paladin is capable of performing pain-relieving magic. She asks him to try again, but this time he fails badly. So his senior tells him to come again tomorrow so that she could train him, starting with his physical ability, because it is very poor. The next morning, Reinhardt and Adrena wake up hours before the temple starts. Reinhardt still feels tired because he woke up early. Adrena tells him that they would go for a run but they should warm up. So Adriana starts the exercise, which Reinhardt follows. During this, Adrena says that she has tried talking to Arts, who just likes bullying Junior with a weaker strength for his pride, and she does not like this. Reinhardt asks her if helping him would become a problem, but she tells him that no one knows about it, after which they start running, and Adrena notices Reinhardt's low speed and tries to get him to run faster. Every time Reinhardt would start to feel tired, Adrena would use her skills to give him energy. She tells him about Ludwig and his speed. Adrena tells him that they would need to do at least three hours of physical exercises before they would be able to practice swordsmanship. After running, both of them head to the gym. After working out for some time, Adrena tells him that this is enough exercise for today. She tells him that physical abilities do not only come from exercising. He also has to eat good, nutritious food. Adrena leaves him alone. Reinhardt feels like his body is doing fine but feels exhausted, so he decides to head to the Royal Class Cafeteria, a special kind of cafeteria built only for the elite students. The cafeteria has the best chefs, who prepare good food with good ingredients. Not only that, but in addition to the regular meal times, one can request that the chef prepare anything they desire. When Reinhardt walks into the cafeteria, he finds Ellen there. He finds her eating the leftover meat from the ready-made dinner. He realizes that Ellen must be up for doing exercises and must have been hungry due to this reason. Reinhardt asks her about the food she was eating and its taste. Ellen replies casually, so Reinhardt allows her to eat her food in peace. He goes into the kitchen and is impressed to find such a nice kitchen with a pantry that is always full. He decides to go with something common that is easy to make, so he decides to make bacon and eggs. Ellen, who was sitting outside, started to smell the aromas coming out of the kitchen but decided to keep eating. When Reinhardt was done making, he brought it out in a pan and sat in front of Ellen. He tells her to dig in and eat with him. He asks her if she is eating ready-made food because she does not know how to cook. After getting no answer from her, he tells her to try doing things that she finds she is unable to do. This will make things easier for him. Both of them start to eat. Ellen seemed pretty hungry as she was still eating very fast. Reinhardt told her to eat slowly, but he was late as the food was already finished. Reinhardt was annoyed because he couldn't get more of the food he just made. While Ellen tells her that she still feels hungry, Reinhardt tells her that they will eat the lunch together, and today again he would make her eat two bowls of chongguk jang. After this, he goes to his room, takes a nice bath and refreshes. While standing outside the mirror, Failure notices his stamina and strength points increasing. This was not unusual, but in fact, somehow his magic points also increased by 0.1. He thinks that he does not have time to be lazy. The duel is in two weeks, after which he would still have to figure out his matters with Betrues, Charlotte, and the gate. He would be able to do it successfully with the help of self-suggestion, which is still unlocked. So for now, all he's got is this body, so he should trust it and work harder. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video, but most important, leave a comment, until the next video.